Check, 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 check. Yo, how we doing tonight? We good? We good, we good, we good. Hey, um, we're gonna go ahead and just jump into tonight because there's a lot of ground that I want to cover. Um, let me preface it by saying this. This is the last week of our relationship series, okay? Say, oh. Okay, yeah, I feel the exact same way you guys do. Um, we, tonight, we're gonna talk about something fun. Um, at least I, I think it's fun. Last week, we talked about the secret of marriage, um, dying to self, and this week, I wanna talk about love. <laughs> y'all with me? Look at the person next to you and say, I love you. Don't make it weird, though. Some of y'all are making it weird. The whole, <laughs> love you too, Jay. The whole purpose of this series, Young Adult Family, is to teach about relationships and how life-giving they can be. Um, I think there are so many people in this world that are doing it wrong. And I'm not saying I do it right all the time, but I want to give you information on things that I have learned, and I want to point us in the direction of what the Bible says about it. But this is the relationship series, and I know you guys have been wondering for a while when we're gonna have a little bit more fun than we've been having, so tonight we're gonna have some fun. Single people, again, raise your hands. Single people, raise your hands. Okay. Um, fellas, fellas. Let me help you out a little bit. Um, if you're a dude trying to pick up some, trying to pick up some chicks at church, let me give you some uh, some good Christian pickup lines, okay? You can use these, okay? I'm, I'm giving you free reign to use these. I've used all of them on my wife, and she's dumped me every time. So, here's 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 number one. You ready? Say I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Here's pickup line number one, fellas. You can use this. Write this down if you want to. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> he doesn't want any of these pickup lines. I'm usually not very prophetic, but I can see us together. You like that? You like that? Did that go over some of your heads? Okay, okay. How about this one? How about this one? If this is you, awesome. You're like, you're scoping out, and then you see her, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, is that a thin line, duotone, combat, red letters, journaling, ESV, travel Bible in your pocket? <laughs> She's like, no, it's just my jewel. And you're like, oh, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Don't get into that relationship. Uh, here's another one. Hey, girl, uh, so unfortunately, I can't perform miracles, and I've only got enough bread and fish for two people. <laughs> yeah, you like it? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Thumbs up? Okay. Carson likes that. Okay. What about this one? Hey, girl. Um, hey, girl, I just want you to know I'm praying for you. No, like... I'm praying for you. <laughs> okay, that's corny. That's super corny. We're gonna do something different that we've never done in this place before. Raise your hand. Okay, before you raise your hand, I'm gonna preface this. We're gonna, we're gonna have some fun tonight. Um, if you are a single female in this building right now and you're okay going on a blind date, raise your hand. Whoa, that's a lot of people. All right, first one I saw. Come up, come on up here. Yep, right there in the middle. You're single, first of all. You're not sitting next to your boyfriend, are you? Because that would be awkward. No? Yeah, you. Oh, are you? Okay. No, you guys both want a blind date. That's okay. What's your name? Emily. Guys, this is Emily. <laughs> All right, here's what, here's what, uh, you want to come up here too? Sure. We got two people that are going to go on blind dates. What's your name? Kennedy. Kennedy. Emily and Kennedy. All right, here's what I need from you guys. Um, I need you to close your eyes and turn towards the stage. Okay. Don't, you cannot open your eyes. That's cheating. Don't open your eyes. That's cheating. Give me three guys that are single in this place that are willing to go on a blind date. Three guys, three guys, three guys, three guys. All right, the two right there, two in the middle, two in the middle, two in the middle. All right, come on up here. Come on up here, come on up here. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Fellas, you're gonna stand over here. You're gonna stand over here. Come over here, come over here. You're gonna stand over here. Okay. Ladies, don't open your eyes yet. Don't open your eyes. Here's what's gonna happen. Oh, don't cheat. I'm gonna give them a chance to spit their very best Christian pickup line. I said Christian pickup line, okay? And you are going to pick which one you like the best and you have to go on a blind date with them, okay? These, they're both like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay? You agree to these terms? You agree to these terms? I'm in, I'm in the matchmaking business right now. We're gonna, try and, we're gonna try and set this up. Okay, ladies, don't look, don't look. This is bachelor number one. Don't give me your name. 
you're just gonna, you're just number one, okay? Best Christian pickup line. Ladies, make sure you're paying attention. You can't think for a moment. You wanted to go on this date, you should have a handbook full of these, okay? Ready? Go. You want to go on a Bible study? <laughs> you want to go on a Bible study? <laughs> okay, that's, ladies, that's, that's number one. Number two, what do we got? I was reading through the book of Numbers. I didn't find yours. Okay. Hey, you got some applause there. You got some applause there. Number three, are you ready? I don't have one, I gotta look it up. I don't have one, I gotta look it up. In the number book, it's like. <laughs> he said, I don't got a number, I gotta look it up. I don't even know, it's okay. My name is, hey, blind date time. Okay, so those, th this is what we get to choose from. Ladies, if you just wanna turn around and say, no thank you, you can go back and sit down. It's totally your call. But we're gonna give you a chance to pick one, two, or three. Two, for sure. <laughs> Should I give them both a pick? And if they both pick two, they have to go on a... No, that's, the, that's bad. So she picked number two. You can, you can either pick or you can go sit back down. I'm going to give you the option. Mm, I'll just go for number one. Number one and number two. It's okay. Number three, your name is Derek. Tell everybody your name. My name is Derek. Ladies, he's still single, okay? You can go, you can go sit back down. All right, this is who you're going on a date with. You, what was your name, Emily? Emily. This is Demetrius. Demetrius and Emily get caught. Oh, you said number two? Psych, you don't get Demetrius. <laughs> this is Ethan. This is Ethan. Say hi, exchange contact information. He doesn't have your number, he wants your number later. This is, this is not meant to be awkward, this is meant to be fun. Hey, who knows what happens from here? And then, one more, one more time, Kennedy Demetrius. He literally just said, you wanna go on a Bible study with me? <laughs> All right, exchange contact information later on. You guys, that's the night, we'll see you next week. Take it easy. Just kidding, you guys can go sit back down. But for real, you have to go on a blind date. You have to, you have to do it. You don't have to marry each other, but you have to go on a blind date. The Bible, okay, that right there is, is just an illustration of how not to, to set people up, okay? If something happens from it, I gotta pray, because I feel terrible right now. Lord, would you do something with me? Lord, would you, could we just look into what your word says? Um, Lord, we trust you in this place. Would you do what only you can do? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Look at the person next to you and say, that was awkward. <laughs> Relationships are found all throughout the Bible. First Corinthians is considered the love chapter. Last week we talked about Genesis and Revelation, um, which we jumped into um, talking about the first time we see a wedding and a marriage and the last thing we will see is a wedding and a marriage. How many of y'all read Song of Solomon? <laughs> Don't start with that book, because that, that, that goes right into the nitty-gritty of sex, okay? If you want to, you can. Song of Solomon's a great, okay. In our culture, young adult family, listen, listen. In our culture, in the Americanized Western culture, very rarely, and you would agree with me on this, I hope, very rarely do we get our dating and marriage advice from the one that created all of it. Instead, we go to what media says looks good, what media says should feel good. Or we grow up thinking that love is what we saw in our households. And unfortunately for a lot of people or a lot of situations, that's not the best outcome. There was divorce, abuse, mistreatment, lying, cheating, all of the above. So because of that, because of that, when someone tries to help you see love from a biblical perspective, the easiest thing for us to do is tune it out. We just tune it out. We would rather do what media and movies teach us, when something happens, we end up running to what is familiar and false instead of what is trustworthy and true. When it hurts, when it's tough, and it's familiar, that's what we always run to. Watch, 
want you guys to just go ahead and say the next thing that comes um, after what I'm about to say. Okay, you ready for this? Mom, thank you. <laughs> I didn't even say anything, he told me. You ready? My mama don't like you and she likes everyone. Come on. And I never, sing it. I get so caught up in my job, didn't see what's going on. Come on, sing it. What is it? Hey, hey, hey. Whew. She go it. All right, you get it, you get it, you get it. You get it, you get it. Um, what about this? You lost that love and feeling. Whoa. <laughs> You've lost that love and feeling, now it's. Raise your hand if you knew that song. That's my oldies people. You guys, listen to oldies. Listen to oldies music. You've lost that love and feeling. That's a song about lost love. The first song was about breaking up. And what about this one? Ladies, if you don't sing this and I'm up here by myself, I'm literally walking off stage. Are right, you ready? Okay, I gotta mentally prepare myself because I can't believe I'm about to do this. Romeo, take me somewhere we can. Come on, ladies. Why are the guys singing louder? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why? Why do we easily go to those things? Listen, all of those songs, breakup songs, lost love, that last one is about the perfect love story, the true love story. What we desire most, get this, young adults, what we desire most is someone that won't hurt us or leave us or forsake us. We want the perfect love story. So it seems like we really want Jesus, but we look for all of his attributes in someone else's life instead of looking for his attributes in ourselves. I want the perfect love story, but I'm not gonna start with myself. So when we can't find that, we write songs and make posts and point fingers in every direction but our own, simply because we don't understand this four-letter word called love. Some of you are like, boys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and help us figure out what love is the best way that I can. Tell the person next to you, I wanna know what love is. <laughs> I turn the person next to you on the other side and say, Don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. I got a message title for you, and it's not gonna make sense right now, but it will. So if you're taking notes, write this down. Creating crystals, creating crystals, creating crystals, creating crystals. Say, boy, let's get to the Bible. Say, boy, let's get to the Bible. We're going, let's go. Judges 16, Judges 16. I wanna look at a story that some of you are familiar with, some of you might not be familiar with. I wanna talk about Samson and Delilah, Judges 16, verse one says this. One day, Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza. Gaza was enemy territory. And spent the night with a prostitute. Look, look, don't be shocked. I'm gonna say it right now. Don't be shocked when you travel into areas you shouldn't be and find yourself sleeping with the enemy. He already knew that was enemy territory, but he went anyways and ended up sleeping with a prostitute. Word soon spread that Samson was there. So the men of Gaza gathered together and waited all night at the town gates. They kept quiet during the night, saying to themselves, when the light of morning comes, we will kill him. Let me give you three things that love is not. Number one, love is not an emotion. Love is not an emotion. If you didn't know this, Samson is married at this point in time. Samson is married, and he slept with another woman. Because he let his emotions drive his feelings, his feelings drove his body, and his body broke before another woman that wasn't even his wife. Love is not based on emotion, people. So many of us think, man, I'm so caught up in the emotions of this relationship. I'm so in love. Love is not an emotion and love is not driven by your feelings. Number one, love is not an emotion, and number two is this, love is not a feeling. Love is not a feeling. 
Um, don't let your feelings dictate your actions. Here's what I mean. I'm gonna give us some practical examples. I don't feel like brushing my teeth today. Okay. Then you'll continue getting, <laughs> then you'll continue getting cavities. And if your teeth have black holes in them, what else in your life does? I don't feel like feeding my cat today. Good, that's one less cat in the world. Let's move on. Man, man, I don't feel like pursuing my wife today. Then you'll end up pursuing someone or something that isn't your wife. Good thing Jesus felt like dying on the cross, huh? Could you imagine, listen, could you imagine if Jesus didn't pursue the cross simply because he didn't feel like it? Do you think he wanted to? No, he literally asked the Father if there's any other way to provide it. But because he did what he didn't feel like doing, it created an opportunity for a deeper relationship with him. So maybe it's biblical, family, that dying to your feelings will create enhanced relationships. Love is not a feeling. Um, so Samson sleeps till midnight, gets up, sneaks out, and now, now we get to the nitty gritty. Now we get to introduce his next love. This is not his first love or his ex-love. This is his next love. Oh, let me tell you this too. Um, his wife, Samson's wife, was also a Philistine, which, which was the enemy. He ended up marrying someone that he was not compatible with, that was the enemy. So he married someone he shouldn't have. He slept with a prostitute. And now we find him falling in love with somebody else that is the enemy. Do you see the cycle that is happening here simply because he was driven by emotion and feeling. So this isn't his first love or his ex-love. This is his next love. Judges 16, four says this. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman named, what's her name? Delilah. Delilah. Anybody listen to that on the radio? Good. You guys are, some of y'all are Christians in this place. Delilah, it's literally a radio station. You can call in and explain all of your love problems that you have going on. A radio station where you can call in and talk about your love issues that you're having and it's called Delilah. That's insane. She's like, I can help you out, what's going on? You're like, well, and then you start, Delilah. Can I tell you this too? Delilah actually means delicate. The name means delicate. And if you know anything about Samson, what's he known for? Boy is known for his strength. Samson's a big boy. Isn't it crazy how sometimes the most delicate things can break apart the strongest things in your life? Delilah broke apart this man. It says Samson was in love with Delilah. Y'all, he has a wife. He slept with a prostitute. And now he loves Delilah? That hurt my voice. I won't do that again. Let me tell you this. When I fell in love with Tiffany, my heart was beating out of my chest. Ten years later, it still does because we work on our marriage. And when you work on things with the one you are married to, your attraction to them increases. You know what it takes to fall in love? A pulse. You know what it takes to stay in love? A plan. <laughs> That's truth right there. If you don't write nothing else down, write that down. Anybody can fall in love with anybody. It just takes a pulse, your heart beating. But in order to keep that love strong and going, it takes a plan. Delilah only created in Samson a pulse. There was no plan or follow through with them. <laughs> Think about this. When, when, when somebody has a heart attack or... Um, a major, major life altercation. If somebody's passed out in front of you, um, EMS is usually called 
and, or, or if anybody is a registered nurse or something, what is the first thing that people run up and check? It's a pulse, right? <laughs> Could you imagine that if you saw somebody pass out right in front of you and you went up and checked the pulse, he was just like, cool, he's gonna live, we're good. <laughs> Let's go on with our day and just left him there? That's ridiculous. There is always a follow-up plan as to what to do next, how to revive them, how to get them better. A pulse without a plan can easily lead to death. A pulse without a plan can easily lead to death. Delilah was a pulse without a plan. Samson liked how he felt based on how she looked, and he was in love. Boy was like, ah, my chair stopped. I'm in love. No, 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 no. Samson found the right one this time, right? He found the right one this time. There's two key phrases in the statement that I just made that make absolutely no sense that I think a lot of people fall for. Right one this time. Right one this time. What are they? Right one this time. Um, I think a lot of us are pressured, and I'll just say this. I think a lot of us are pressured to find the right one. Maybe that's from family or friends. And that's just, it's just not realistic. I wanna, I wanna paint it this way for you. Um, these, if you didn't know, are cups, okay? First and foremost, just needed to get that. So I wanna show this in the best way that I possibly can. Um, this right here represents all of my, my single people, all right? This one, ladies, I'm gonna say like, you're, you're focused on everything good in life. You're doing good, you're trusting God, you're like, he finna, he finna bring me someone I'm waiting for, right? He finna bring me somebody that, 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 that I love, that understands the power of the cross. He finna bring me someone that loves Jesus, right? That's, that's where we get, and then, and then after, after three Valentine's days at your mama's house, or three single awareness days, you're like, oh my gosh, man, I'm like the only single one in my group. I don't care. Have him bring me somebody with a cross tattoo. I don't care. As long as he got a cross on his body, I'm, I'm, I'm falling for that, right? So we end up falling for somebody that's a little bit messed up. Don't really, don't really look the same. We lower our standards and find someone we think is right. Oh, man, he must be right. So I've been, I've been single long enough, and all my friends are getting into relationships, and they're all getting married. I, gotta, I just got to gotta get into I think he's the right one. He could be, he could be the right one. I think, I think he's the right one. Um, we get so close to them that now, instead of waiting for somebody that God brings you, you try to out Jesus Jesus, and you pour your life into theirs, right? So what you started with is now a part of this person because you thought they could potentially be the right, well, hey, I'm just gonna give them all that I have and I'm gonna, I'm gonna convert them to, to Jesus and it's gonna be the best thing in the entire world. But you don't have the power to change them and then you realize after so much of you pouring into them, they actually begin pouring all of themselves in to you. And now, what started out as someone focused on the Lord, clean and pure. The person that you called the right one has quickly turned you into someone the mirror doesn't even recognize. All because you thought they were the right one. Don't lower your standards this far. Single people, ladies, fellas, that is not love. That's a scary place to be. Good thing they were the right one, huh? You come out looking like this. There is no right one. I'm gonna tell you that right now. There is no right one. If you've been told that lie in your life, there is no right one, which is why second marriages fail more than first marriages. 
because people are still trying to look for the right one. That first one wasn't the right one, but this second one, that is for sure gonna be the right one. And sometimes third marriages or fourth marriages or fifth, there is no right one. If you've, listen, just for a second, let me expose to you a lie that you may have been told about marriage. I hope this shatters every expectation of what you think it does. If you've, been, if you've been told to hurry up and get married because it will fix all the problems that you have right now in your single life or dating life, you've been lied to. Marriage does not fix your problems, family. It magnifies your dysfunctions. It only increases the problems. And if you don't deal with those problems before you get married, you will begin to blame your spouse for something you never fixed. But... But I thought marriage would solve all of our problems and now you're just making me crazy in the head. No, you're the crazy. It just goes back and forth and back and forth. Fix the problems now. Samson was so focused on himself. Listen to this, fam. Samson was so focused on himself and his desires that even though he thought he was doing the right things, it left him impure and without God. Impure and without God. And if you haven't learned it yet from Samson, let me tell you something. Impurity is a cycle that will keep repeating itself now, later, and generationally if you don't put in the work to break the cycle. Keyword, work. Put it in. Listen, I think this happens a lot. Hey, Clayton, bro, but when I get married, I'll stop looking at porn. That's, that's when also, when I get married, she's all mine. No, the reason you look at porn is because you look at porn, period. When, when I get married, Clayton, I'll stop drinking. No, you'll probably start drinking more. Marriage is stressful. Just kidding, you won't do that. Don't push things that you struggle with now off onto, but when I get married, but when I get married, but when I get married, I'll change. When I get married, I'll stop sleeping around. Which is a lie that I struggled with. It's a lie I told myself. When I get married, I'll stop sleeping around. I have not done that in marriage, but let me tell you something. If you don't fix those problems now, it will come back and haunt you in your marriage. Let me be real with you. Um, I've shared this mul multiple times from stage, and, and if this hits somebody for the first time tonight, if you've heard this a thousand times, listen again, okay? Listen again. I'm gonna share something about my life that I want you to take because I don't want you to step where I have stepped or go where I have gone. My desire to have sex before marriage got me into four years of intimacy problems with my own wife. There will come a day that you've gotta look your spouse in the eyes and tell them everything about your past. What you're doing now is your present, and your present will become your past, and somehow, family, your past has a crazy way of coming back and affecting your future. If I would have just stopped, if I would have put in the work to break the cycle. But I thought, y'all, I thought, man, like, I want this stuff right now. I thought I was in love. I was caught up in my feelings and my emotions. When I get married, I'll stop sleeping around. I, yeah, I did stop. But at what cost? What cost to continue doing it while I was single? If you don't fix the problems now, it will affect your marriage later. And I'm just being real. I'm being real. Married people know it. They can tell you. Um, Paul said, whatever a man sows, the same he shall reap. You can't sow sin and reap blessing. What you put into the ground is what comes out of the ground. You don't plant pumpkins and somehow grow apples. It just doesn't, those don't even come from the same source. It does not make any sense whatsoever. I was in Prescott this past weekend, window shopping. And I love window shopping. I love looking at things. 
But this particular shirt I was looking at for a really long time, and the shirt convinced me that I needed it. So I went in and I bought it. If I would have kept walking, I wouldn't have spent the money on something I didn't need. What you spend time looking at and pursuing is what you will end up getting. I promise you. But Clayton, but, but, but Clayton, I can act now, right? So I can act now and, and, and ask forgiveness down the road and God will forgive me, right? Darn right he will. Of course he'll forgive you. If you ask and believe, he'll forgive you. But there is a difference between forgiveness and consequence. Yes, he will forgive you, but he would much rather be using you and blessing you than forgiving you. And whoever told you that, I think this is a lie people have been told. Whoever's told you that God's highest good was to forgive you was wrong. Will he forgive you? Yes, if you ask and believe, but he'd rather use you and bless you and continuously feel you tugging on his cloak. God, forgive me, God, forgive me, God, forgive me, God, forgive me. Romans 6, Paul says, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Paul says, of course not. Listen, I'm gonna get real for, for just a little bit. Don't trade what you want most for what feels good right now, okay? Instant gratification is instant failure. You can't just do what you want and have what God wants. So if you don't overcome your problems now, you will bring them into your marriage later. But Clayton, what about my, what about my past? If I give all that to God, I, what happens if I've already done that? What happens if, I've already done that a, a few times. Or what happens if I was introduced to something at an early age because the rest of the football team was watching it on the TV and now it's just normal for me? And this breaks my heart that so many people have to struggle with this. But Clayton, what if I was touched and forced into a situation that was out of my control and against my own will? Listen, to the people in this room that I'm talking to in that, I don't know what that feels like. But let me just tell you that it's not your fault, okay? If you've never heard that before, let me tell it to you. Don't blame yourself for something the enemy wants victory in. In no way am I trying to minimize whatsoever the pain of what you feel or the weight that you carry, but can I remind you something? The cross that Jesus carried weighed more than the situation that happened to you, and he took the pain so you don't have to carry it anymore. His pain covered yours. You don't need to carry what's already been put on his shoulders. The devil will always try and shame you for the things that Christ has already paid for. Think about that. Don't let him win. You don't have to carry the shame of someone else's sin. Jesus did that. That's not your job. The biggest lie you can believe is that if it's already been done, if you've already messed up, then it's too late. That's a lie. That's a lie. Jesus wiped away the expiration date. Listen, Jesus wiped away forever the expiration date on redemption. And the only thing keeping you bound is yourself. If the only form of Love you've experienced has been through lies and deception. You have only seen fake love. Samson and Delilah's love, young adult family, was based on emotion, feeling, and lies. And that is not love. Love is not an emotion. Love is not a feeling. And number three, love is not lying. Love is not lying. Let me tell you, so Samson falls in love with Delilah. She doesn't love him back. And now she's got him wrapped around her finger. Some crazy men say, hey, we will pay you to capture him and tell us the secret to how he's so strong. Hand him over to us. So Delilah deceives him, goes running and crying to him, and he shares his power with her. She's the only one 
that has ever known where his power comes from. He tells her, it's in my hair, the power is in my hair. Delilah was the only one that knew the secret. Look, that type of love is using one another rather than serving one another. They say to each other, I am with you because I love you. But what they really mean is I am with you because you are useful to me. That is fake love. And with that information, she lulls him to sleep, calls in a man to shave his head, and his strength had left him. (laughs) Emotions, feelings, lies. And now, Samson has nothing. He's captured, loveless, and lonely, all because he settled settled for what felt right. Felt right. Um, I I wanna show a picture, and I want you to tell me what, what this picture is, okay? Shout it out. What is this? That's a diamond ring, right? That's a diamond ring. I looked this up. Um, this diamond ring, I was gonna get this for my wife, um, but it cost $25,000 and I said, no, <laughs> not gonna get, I wasn't really gonna get that for my wife, but this is a diamond ring and that, little, that literal ring cost $25,000. That's a lot of dough. That's a lot of dollars, okay? Um, now, I wanna show you this. Woo, my oh boy, it's pretty, right? That ring cost $85. Yeah, someone said Walmart? <laughs> no. That is, that is what's called Swarovski crystal, okay? I, I remember going into a Swarovski store uh, when I was younger. They're in malls, and, and, and it caught my eye because everything in there was shiny and nice. So I walked in there, and I was blown away by the price. $85 to buy that ring, and it looks identical to the diamond ring previously. So I did a little bit of digging, and I wanna share this with you. Listen, with this ring right here, the person who began making them was called Daniel Swarovski back in 1891. Daniel wanted to ensure that people got diamonds without being involved in mining them. When making them, the chemical components are melted at very high temperatures. Up to now, the ratio that Daniel used in this process remains a secret. The final polishing makes it look like a diamond. And then the company adds a covering on them called Aurora Borealis. From here, they look like diamonds 100%. Go back, to the, go back to the picture before that, the diamond. Listen to this. Diamonds are the hardest mineral on earth and in the market. This feature comes from it being able to resist chemicals and have a high thermal conductivity. This feature makes it the most expensive when sold or resold. They never get any scratches or tarnish when you buy them, and the unique features of diamond make it a luxurious item that you would wish to own. If you own it, you will be having some level of respect in society. Anybody can get a crystal. And a lot of us would rather settle on what looks good now in that which is cheaper than waiting for what is worth more. So we end up creating crystals and begin basing love and relationships off of cheap lookalikes when God has the real thing for you. If you would just allow him the process to produce it. Man creates crystals God provides diamonds. The price for a diamond, my friend, is far worth the wait. It is so worth waiting for. It's unbelievable to me how much a Swarovski crystal looks like that, if not better. But it's cheaper and it's a lookalike. That's what we end up doing with love. We settle for what we want now instead of what God has for us later. Listen, this is what it does. (laughs) I love this. This is how we see a lot of relationships. We fall for unrealistic expectations, which leads to selfish desires, which is fake love. Fake love 
leads to hiding your true self, which leads to holding on to secrets. Secrets create arguments, which turn into ammo against the other person. You then use that ammo to blame shift. Blame shifting causes separation, which creates heartbreak. And heartbreak leads to hurts, habits, and hangups that you never needed to begin with. Like Samson, we love the idea of love without understanding what love is. Love is not an emotion. It's not a feeling. Love is not lying or deceit or attraction or romance or sex or late night Netflix. Love is none of that. I'm gonna tell you what love is. Before I do that, I wanna demonstrate it in a way that I hope brings a smile to your face. I wanna show you a series of pictures, all of these being myself, okay? Picture number one. Cute, right? Yeah, you're like, that's not you. That is me. That is my beautiful wife. But if I were to zoom in, young adult family, look at what is underneath my lip. We call that a soul patch, okay? No idea what I was doing when I was giving myself a soul patch. If you have a soul patch, I'm sorry. It didn't look good on me, okay? That's a soul patch. Next picture, that's me uh, with zigzags in my head, bushy eyebrows, and a handlebar mustache. I had a handlebar mustache for a while because I thought it was cool, okay? Next picture, gross. <laughs> my dog looks better than I do in this picture. Again, three lines on the side of my head flowing into, I have no idea. That looks like the edge of a cliff with a soap patch. <laughs> That's, and if that one's not good enough, I took a video because I thought it was the coolest thing at this point in time. So this is me rocking my ridiculous looking, oh wait, before we do that, this is what's called a monkey tail, okay? Yeah, 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 the, 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 you can see it. It goes from my, um, my sideburns all the way up and is a mustache. That's all I had on my face. It was called, a, I literally, I, I had this shaved into my face and I had to go to Walmart afterwards forgetting that I had this on my face. I called my wife in Walmart and I'm like, people are looking at me so freaking weird. People are judging me and she's like, yeah, you have a monkey tail on your face. <laughs> I was like, totally forgot about that. Um, but then this, this is the last one. Look how cool I look here, guys. I look so freaking cool. Wow. Yeah. I went where the wild things were too. Look how silly. Okay, okay, you're like, Clayton, why are you showing us these pictures of your ridiculous facial hair? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what love is. Love is not a, an emotion, love is not a feeling, love is not lying, love is a choice. How do I know that? My wife chose to stay with me despite my ridiculous facial hair face. That is how I know love is a choice, okay? <laughs> love is a choice. You choose it. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 13, four through seven says this. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Family, in 1 John 4, if you read that book, I encourage everybody in this room to go read 1 John, all of it. The very back of your Bible. It's all about how God is love. God is love. And if Jesus and God are one and the same, that would mean Jesus is Love. So 1 Corinthians would also read this way. Jesus is patient and kind. Jesus is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. He does not demand his own way. He is not irritable and he keeps no record of being wronged. He does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Jesus never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures 
through every circumstance. Jesus didn't die because he felt like it. He chose it. Again, I remind you that he asked for any other way. God, would he would just take this cup from me? But that didn't happen. Jesus didn't die because he felt like it. He chose it. When the world did not love him, he loved the world so much to die for it so that you and I would understand what love truly looks like. The true definition of love and relationship is found at the cross, and the choice to love is what will keep relationships healthy. You can't love someone fully until you fully love God. Hold that close. Keep that close. Again, love is not an emotion. Love is not a feeling. Love is not lying. Love is a choice. And an incredible one at that. Um, I think I want to do something right now. Can I just have everybody stand up? Everybody stand up real quick. Here's what I want us to do. We're gonna end a little bit different. This is just coming to me right now, but I, I think, I think it's, it's, for, it's for some people in here. Here's what I want you to do. Don't leave. Don't leave this room right now. We're gonna end with a worship song and we've got an incredible announcement for you afterwards. Um, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find three or four people around you. And this might be uncomfortable for some people. That's okay. Get out, get out of your comfort zone. We're just gonna take 10 minutes. I just want you to share who you are. I want you to talk. I just want you to pray for each other. I'm not asking you to share your deepest, darkest secrets. I'm not asking you to do that. I'm not asking you to dive into anything that you don't want to share. But I just wanna create in this room an atmosphere of love because we love you. We care about you. We wanna do life with each other. That starts by communicating with each other. So do this real quick. Just find three or four people around you. Introduce yourself. Tell them the best part about your day. Whatever you wanna share is awesome but let's just pray for each other. Can we do that? You can spread out. You don't have to stay in the same spots that you're at right now, but let's just do that. Let's create in this place an atmosphere of love. Cool?
God, we, we trust you, Lord. I pray that conversations don't stop um, because I'm on a microphone. I pray that conversations don't stop um, tonight. God, I pray that we continue them and carry them out, Lord. Um, for, the, for the people in this room that have failed to hear the words, I love you, can I remind you right now that God is singing that over you, that he loves you. There's nothing else that matters. You are loved by the creator of all things. And he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I pray for intimacy and realness, God. I pray that we would understand what love looks like because of what was done for us on the cross. Not the pursuit of a relationship. I thank you for everything you're doing in this ministry in our lives. God, and as we worship you in this last song, God, um, we give everything we have to a God that so deserves it. God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.